Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to another amazing match here at Overwatch Tranquility. We are headed into the very first match of the Transcendence tier for Season 5, and I am so excited to introduce you to our teams tonight. We've got Tempo versus Otaku Empire, two brand new teams to the Transcendence tier. I'm your play-by-play -play for the evening, Captain Jack, joined by Thistle on the color. How you doing tonight, Thistle? I am doing fantastically. I have not gotten to cast for Overwatch Tranquility yet. This will be my first recording. And uh, you and I are already a bit familiar with each other. Have a bit that of a That is true. We, this should we, be a lot of fun. 
I, I really hope it will be that Thistle and I did casting for a couple other organizations together and I was able to get them on over here for season five. So we are so happy to have you with us. Now, these two are going to be some incredible powerhouse teams right here. I'm looking at a little bit of the very little history that we have about these teams. And Otaku Empire, although new to season five, is not new to Overwatch Tranquility. They are actually headed by the season two champion and GM Yojack. So uh, we do have some familiarity with Otaku Empire. And according to the predictions and polls channel that you all participated in, Otaku Empire is currently sitting at 40 and 11 to win this evening. So I'm really excited to see if this is going to be the case. Our first map of the evening, we're going to be headed to Elios, uh, which is always a great map to start off with. First map actually being Elios Lighthouse. But before we do that, let's go ahead and throw it to some quick introductions. I'll go ahead and start off with uh actually it doesn't look like we have the teams labeled here so let me throw it over to uh our spreadsheet it looks like for tempo we have uh Werner, willow uh brad swaglicious and lilithy as well as i forgot that last one that last pronunciation. Uh, there we go. Thank you. So, all right. So red is otaku. Good to know. And uh, Tener, I think it was the last pronunciation, if I got that right. And then for tempo, we've got coming in Blur, Gohan, Natty, Open, one. Silas, Round and one. Wolfie. Gotcha. Let's go ahead and move our way into the action as they go ahead and get set up. Uh, Thistle, what do you see coming in? I see a pretty interesting hybrid comp from the side of Tempo, which is gonna be the ball Orisa. We're gonna see how that interacts with this guy here. That will definitely be interesting. They're already engaging right outside of the lighthouse as they go ahead and dive onto the high ground. We'll see Open go ahead and take down the Brad turret to start things off as they move their way into the objective. It is now unlocked and it is a 1v3 right now. Prince Lily trying to fend off as much as possible, but Open will go ahead and take them out of the fight rather quickly. Werner now in the fight, trying to see if they can get that pick on to Blur, but going to be unsuccessful as Open is just openly abusing the team right now. They have captured the objective and Otaku Empire will continue their percentage climb, 10% and climb. Now the pharmacy seems to be a pretty big issue that Otaku is giving towards Tempo. The, they've already swapped over to that ash from the torbjorn and they've reset the ultimate counter the ultimates seem to be pretty skewed they have the coalescence and the barrage open for this fight all right well let's see if they can make something happen looks like the brad has swapped over but break barrage the brad shutting it down very quickly and we'll follow up on to natty coming in for that res willow following up on to blur and with all those picks we will go ahead and see tempo methodically make their way into the objective at the 50 percent mark we will see control swap on over to tempo now even though that was a pretty hard lost fight for otaku there we do have a pretty even ultimate economy coming into this third engagement with 50 percent on the clock for them they're not upset about this dynamite goes in catches the tanks it's gonna be good news for the brad's bob coming in that is true might be able to get that charge up before the fight begins the window ends up coming out there for 10 as they work their way into the objective coming out we see the dmax and bomb doesn't get what it's looking for now we're seeing the bomb getting invested into the fight minefield going down on the objective as the primal comes out from blur it is just the battle of the cues right now and Wolfie just working in that back line getting picked after pick right now prince lily trying to hold the objective solo but you're not gonna take down the entire otaku empire they will grab the objective back at the 50 percent mark and continue their percentage climb that's a lot of ultimates used for both sides but luckily for tempo they have the they have the bongo online and that's the best one to have when you have nothing else 
You can charge a bunch of ultimates from it, and you can use it to steamroll. Here it comes. There it is. The bongo's coming out, and Blur makes their way onto the high ground, looking to see if they can take it out. But the Orisa Ferner is standing strong. Lilithy ends up flailing Blur right over the side and will continue to make their way into the objective. Immortality Fields coming out right now from 10 as they try to get the pick that they are looking for. Willow leaning up on that tracer will take back the objective at the 87% mark as Tempo starts making their way back up. A nasty stagger there from the Brad onto Stylus. Otaku's gonna have that another 10 second delay coming in from that Moira. They have now swapped over. They have the Ana for the Nano Boost off of the Mercy. Uh, it's gonna be very interesting to see this engagement come out because, like I said, the ultimates that resulted for Tempo are going to be huge here. That is true. High Noon coming out from the Brad, just kind of zoning out the objective as the percentage continues to climb. Bolt Bomb comes out but gets eaten by Gohan very quickly. Diva Bomb goes out, gets trapped on the high ground, doesn't get who they're looking for. Here comes the window, Blade to trade, but ends up getting taken out through the window by the Brad as they continue to try to fight for control. The picks are coming in strong for Tempo, and it looks like Tempo will keep the beat going as they go ahead. Oh no, almost ended up getting it there, but will trigger overtime there for Gohan as Werner takes them out of the fight. Ball coming into the objective, but Lilithi ends up sending them right over the side. Now we see Wolfie trying to get back into that objective, but we are seeing one V6 fight over and over again. Open now in on the tracer, looking to see if they can hold on the objective with those blinks, but Werner taking them out very quickly overtime ticks away and the first map of Helios will go to Tempo. That I think was one of the best counters to Lighthouse Dive I've ever seen come out from any team. Tempo really had it unlocked there and one th one thing that's really huge about Dive is getting control of the area around you and what they did with that high ground whenever they were attacking tempo would immediately deny it and you can't dive into an orisa bunker composition without immense amounts of fear the werner was never was almost never taken out. i don't think it was ever the first casualty orisa with that halt against a diva and a winston that slow tick damage almost no damage will be done to that orisa and that's their that's their fortify that's their head as long as they keep that high ground advantage when attacking and prevent them from taking it when defending they're gonna be a-okay but well new map that is true now we're seeing the we're gonna see the hybrid come out once again with prince willie still on that ball Whereas we're going to see the double shield coming out for Otaku Empire, looking to see if they can grab this objective with all the defense that they have coming in. Wolfie also coming in on that Ash to dole some damage over distance. Big Holt comes in, ends up getting three, but not able to suck anybody in. Ball trying to see if they can send Blur into the well, but gonna be unsuccessful right there as they go ahead and retreat back to the safety of the team. Already 50% captured by the side of Otaku Empire. Gohan Wolfie gets first on the objective right now. The Brad trying to trade up ends up taking down open, but it looks like Otaku Empire will go ahead and take this objective starting their percentage spot. Now the biggest thing about the composition difference is obviously going to be the ball. Prince Willie on that ball again, it looks like they're enjoying this Orisa ball bunker composition hybrid that's going on right now. With what, what we've got here from Tempo, is going to be a displacement kind of composition. You have to capitalize off of it. You have to play fast. A sustained fight will always go in favor of Otaku because they have the shields to get to get you with it. And if they really want something to go fast, they're gonna have to push in harder. That is true. And you have Silas right there constantly on the stun with that brig. Deadeye ends up coming out for Brad, doesn't get the value that it's looking for, and now the Bob gets submitted by Wolfie into the fight. Pulse Bomb from Open ends up taking down Prince Julius Werner, falls to Wolfie's Bob, and that is going to be a hold of the objective for Otaku Empire, 50% and climb. 50% is an excellent spot for them to be at right now, because right now they all they also have, they have two damage amplification ults, and they have a sustainability ult, so even if they get pushed into, Ooh. that's a really good pick. Even if they get pushed into, the rally can keep them sustained, which Lilithy just has not had the opportunity to build yet. 
All right, well, we see the minefield coming out for Prince Willie, but ends up getting trapped on the lighthouse and in the well right there. Uh, as we see the window coming out with the bongos just trying to delay entry to Tempo right now, they're going to go ahead and fend off very well. Not a pick to be had, though, except for the bongos going down. Willoughby will fall to Natty as the slam coming back in from Prince Willie. Not going to get a pick on that, though, as we see... Tracer Willow coming from the high ground, looking to see if they can get a pick on open in the back line, but gonna be unsuccessful. Gravitic Flux coming out, doesn't end up grabbing anybody right there, thanks to Orissa using the Fortify to stay up. Window coming out with the Bongos, looking to see if they can get through that double shield overtime, sticking away right now. This is Tempo's last opportunity to take the well as Burner end up getting the first pick onto Silas. That might spell good for them right now. Slam coming in from Prince Willie, looking to see if they can get that pick onto Natty, but going to be unsuccessful for right now. Now holding strong is Natty as they go ahead and invest in Prince Willie. Does end up getting Natty in the end as Will follows up onto open there. Holding control almost grabbing it for Tempo. The Hulk coming in ends up decimating Gohan. And with the Bob being invested, it is too late. Tempo has taken the objective. And with that Hulk gone, that's not going to be a good way for Otaku Empire to push back in. Now what we saw during that very long fight was the layering of both damage and vocation ults from both sides. And I gotta be honest with you, Jack, I only agree with one of them. I only agree with Tempos. Because they don't have the shield burn or the shield sustain that Otaku has. But there wasn't enough of a bunker, I think, to justify the layering from Otaku. Here comes the mines. That's true. Minefield coming out from Prince Willy. Gonna get absorbed by the shields right there, but they're not gonna have the hold that they're looking for. The Brad ends up taking down open. Here comes the high noon, looking to see if we can get a pick, but the double shield is just gonna get decimated by the high noon, not getting a pick from anyone behind it. Blur will follow up onto Werner though, with that hero out of the fight right now. It's gonna be hard to hold. Silas and Wolfie following up on those kills as well. At the 50% mark, we will see control flip back over to Otaku Empire, but it's not over yet. Brad tries to hold, but gets taken out by Natty. The only one left to touch is Lilithy, but that is going to be the end of that map. One to one. Now Otaku Empire tying it up here on Helium. One of the scariest things I've seen in this current meta, uh, enough to give me nightmares, quite frankly, is a rallying brig with a bongo at her back. Ooh, there's, it's extremely hard to push into, and Honestly, if you don't have one of your own, you can't fight it point blank. And at that point, it really just came down to, to, to Tempo having one and Otaku not. And if, if, if you don't have one on your own, like I said, you can't really push hard into it like was being done by Otaku. So I don't know whether that was an ult-tracking thing or just something they didn't suspect. But pushing hard into a rally when you don't have one, it's, it's, it's almost suicide. It's very, very difficult. I can imagine. That's one of the things that continues to make Briggs such an incredible character, despite the nerfs that have been coming to take her down out of the double shield meta. But Prince Willie coming back in on that ball with Willow and the Brad swapping over to a Widowmaker and Corbjorn, looking to see if that additional damage, especially from that turret, can keep those shields at bay. Control currently in favor of Otaku Empire, looking to see if they can grab hold and start that percentage climb, but Tempo is keeping the beat, not gonna allow them to try to take this, but that double shield still holding so strong right now. Prince Willie just trying to knock everybody and anybody out of that shield so the picks can come in from Willow and the Brad, but it is just not holding as strong as they hope. The windows coming out, the windows are open for either side right now as they try to take down each other's shields, try to get the victim blur. We'll get the first one there on the Prince Will Willie Werner soon to follow, and the control will be taken by Otaku Empire, but the fight is continuing on more of a cleanup as Tempo heads back to spawn. Now, that's, that's, that's the thing here. When you look at the composition coming out from from what, what from tempo they want to play slower they don't want to play as, as well they're, 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 they're going to want to play faster uh, versus otaku because what they've got going on here is again they've got the double shield they've got the sustain here comes the here comes the mines 
That was huge right there. They ended up using the Molten Core to try to get Gohan while they were out of position. Bongo's now coming out from Blur, but placed in a very weird position. It's protected, but it's not providing a lot of power to the team due to the line of sight that the Bongos need. And Lilithy is on the warp app as that break, getting the double kill as Prince Willy and Willow end up following up on that. Lilithy will finalize onto Gohan as they take control of the objective at the 49% mark. Now, as I was saying before, you look at the different compositions, the one thing that Tempo needs to be doing is playing fast. They don't have the sustain, nor do they have the Sombra. What they need to do is pressure out open, and as soon as the TP goes off, realize that it's a 5v6 and push in hard. That's the way they're gonna win this, especially with the EMP coming up. All right, well, the ball ends up sending Bob into the back line of the enemy. So that's gonna help them out. Gravitic Flux, along with the EMP, tries to hold strong, but doesn't get the pick. They are looking for the Brad is on fire. Literally, the Molten Core is all over the objective and is eating up the tanks of the enemy team. Otaku Empire will fall once again as the percentage continues to climb for tempo. I actually really, really enjoyed the combination coming here from tempo. Played correctly? There is such a massive disruption mechanic that can be just utterly abused here. And we already know that from tempo, their DPS line is going to be what's the strongest, so allowing them to pop is just going to be your key to victory. That is true, and we're seeing it once again. The window opens, and Brad's there with the rivet gun, getting the double kill right there. As Prince Willie follows up onto Blur, they have made it to the 75% mark. Will Tempo continue their run, making this their first map in Overwatch Tranquility victory? Or will we see Otaku Empire take it back in this final head-to-head? Uh, -head? Blur is swapped onto the ball here and has been spotted out by their opponents just to get the touch in allow their team to get proper positioning before the fight goes down their last hope here is really just going to be wolfie's bob and silas's rally popped as soon as it's gotten oh that's massive oh, silas ain't gonna be popping that rally anytime soon as prince willie sends them right over the side both bomb Coming in from Willow ends up taking down Natty as well. It is a 5v6 as Bob gets invested into the fight, but doesn't get the value they're looking for. And Willow is a tracer on the edge, getting pick after pick after pick, securing the objective and sending Tempo into victory here on Elios, giving them 1-0 in our Transcendence tier matchup. Now, these have all been very close competitively, but the, bi the biggest thing to me has been Prince Willie's disruption on the Wrecking Ball that's obviously off meta, and it's obviously something that's not gonna be seen in like the kill feed or anything, but the plays where he manages to knock the other team around and forces them to reposition while his team is able to move in, into position is just massive. It allows Brad to pop off. You saw his turret was almost never down. It was constantly in a good position. It was providing uh, it was providing oversight and providing a little bit of protection and support. And of course, you saw that absolutely enormous play by knocking a uh, rallying Silas off of the edge there. Now, Silas could have easily uh, watched out for that, but it, it's like the final throws of a map. That's not exactly what you're going to be thinking about. Brig isn't the easiest person to knock off the edge with shield bash and whip shot to be able to keep herself isolated away from anyone she doesn't want to be in contact with. Mm -hmm. But that was just a beautiful play. That was their biggest advantage. Rally is a huge ultimate, and they were the only ones that had it. So being able to take care of that big advantage, that's exactly what they needed for that last fight. That is true. And that was something that we were continuing to see, just the Battle of the Briggs between uh, Lilithy and Silas just going at each other when those rallies uh, were popped off. They have the reason, uh, especially uh, Silas with Prince Willie being on that ball, uh, had to constantly be looking in the back line. If you if you were watching the camera angles during that, just constantly just looking behind them, making sure that Prince Willie isn't coming yeah. in and always having that stun online uh, and to be able to flail them away before they knocked everyone out of position. But uh, first map is going to end up going to Tempo. So they're um, starting the beat off very nicely, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> 
just say it. Oh, and we're just gonna we're just gonna roll right into it. Don't forget the two minute break. We're headed to Volskaya Industries for our assault map this evening. And I gotta say, the assault has been one of the things that has been on the minds of a lot of players lately with the experimental mode looking at changing it up have you uh have you seen that yet there this i i have actually i played with a couple friends um and we have after exploring it for a, for a decent amount we played about an afternoon a couple hours of it mm -hmm. on volskaya admittedly uh oh it was a lot more fun on certain maps than it was on others volskaya wasn't as much fun to be honest um, it may have something to do with the fact that we got crushed, but we're gonna ignore that for the time being. <laughs> um, but, uh, so pretty much to summarize it for anyone who doesn't know, the biggest portion of this is they're trying to stop snowballs. They're giving the attacking team six minutes to attack point A. And as soon as they cap point A, they swap sides. Then the, then the opposing team, Team B, gets to attack point A with six minutes, and then they swap again, take turns attacking point B with whatever time they had left. It's a very interesting concept, but honestly, I think of it more as an arcade mode than a competitive, competitive stand-in. Yeah, I feel like changing it in that fashion, you know, you just spend all that time building up ultimates and then for what? You like lose them at the end of the fight if you don't use them while taking objective alpha. Like the snowball stinks, I guess, but that's kind of the whole point is that you're strong enough to take alpha and then bravo right after. That's the way it's gotta go. But getting into the fight right now, we see the double shield coming out on either side. We're opting for the Reinhardt, Vice Burners, Orissa, and they are going for that high ground fight right now, making the wrap around as they go ahead and move into the objective. They send uh, Tempo right off the high ground, moving now into the control point, looking to see if they can get those picks, but between Prince Willie and Brad, they are getting those picks that are needed, but are getting traded out for Natty and Silas on that Lucio and Ana. The supports are really carrying it right now for the side of Otaku Empire. They go ahead and get the first pick on the objective, only a minute 10 off the clock, but Prince Willie ends up slamming down Natty with the ball and chain and looking to see if they can get a follow-up before that second pick comes in. Bob gets invested into the point there by Willow, but gets taken down by Gohan. They are off the objective at very least, losing that percentage per minute plus coming out. Doesn't manage to get much of anything, unfortunately, due to the angle that they were trying to work with. Minefield now coming out from Prince Willy all over the objective. No way that they can get in there, but Open will go ahead and get taken down by the all in chain of Prince Willie once again. Molten Core on the field right now for the Brad, but gets followed up on by Blur. The fight just keeps going back and forth, but Otaku still holding strong right now. Prince Willie still has yet to fall, but will end up getting slept there as the big shatter comes in. It looks like this is Prince Willie's demise right there. He's gonna go ahead and fall to Wolfie as they re engage into the fight, but the time continues to tick away at the minute 50 mark we will see control get captured by otaku empire as they head to objective problem and honestly realistically they did not expect to win that they were investing ultimates that either could be built up fast or they knew that they were swapping characters that was that was just to buy a time bank at the one percent chance that they actually did manage to take it back a very very strong start and it was lost as soon as they as soon as they dropped Prince Willy, to be honest. That's true. High noon coming out for Wolfie looking to see if they can get the pick and as the shield falls so does Burner. Now the Nano going in onto Blur looking to see if they can get some picks with the help of Open on that May. Just gonna go ahead and throw the Lizard on the point. Get a couple picks onto Prince Willy and Willow and that will go ahead and grab this objective right now as they hold strong. The Bongo's Try to come out for Werner, but not fast enough for the Super Saiyan Gohan. They will grab the objective with three minutes and 55 seconds on the clock as we head Score. into round two. Now, this is exactly what we were talking about was missing with the new mode. Um, the, the reason that the snowball is less apparent is not only because the fight is stopped halfway through, but also the ultimate economy is reset and it's treated very much like four distinct rounds instead of two. Um, what we saw there was just 
it, it wasn't even really an outplay problem. It was definitely a problem of ultimate economy. Prince Willie having just swapped over and the Arisa being taken out early. I, be I believe it was Wolfie that popped out with the Deadeye that, to that took out Werner. Having the Arisa go down like that is just not something that you want to see. I don't know whether or not uh, we saw uh, Tensor have the ha have the immortality field and just wasn't there, whether they didn't have it on cooldown, whether they just didn't notice or didn't think of it. But that would have been a solid investment because they would have had to provide more resources into taking down Werner, which was not the case when Deadeye was used. There was just... Like, their team broke the shield, which is really easy with the composition they're going for. Burned down in, like, half a second with the proper focus. And then it's, it's just gone. Like, like Werner's gone because of the Deadeye. Uh-oh. Well, just as we're getting ready to go into the action, it looks like we have a pause on the field. Remember, folks, we are uh, all playing from our homes and with the uh, most recent hurricane on the East Coast. Some people might be experiencing some problems, so uh, it looks like we're good, though. Looks like we're ready to get back into the action, so uh, they're going to go ahead and head in again. We're going to see Tempo with this. Oh, no, uh, I guess Prince Willie will not be taking the ball this time around. They will go ahead and swap over to the Sigma, so we're going to see a mirror comp of the double shield for this fight with the Brad opting for the... Um, oh. for the Echo by Wolfie on the Ash. Willow go though, coming in on the Hanzo, gonna get the first pick onto Wolfie as they make their way into the objective. Now it's gonna be up to Open to try to take the Brad out of the sky, and right now is having a very difficult time in doing so. The Brad just is zipping around as that Echo, just sending in a sticky mine over and over again. The trade comes in as the Willow, as Willow able to take down Open, the Brad following up on Natty, and like a set of dominoes, Otaku Empire is gonna fall right here. Uh, we see Silas trying to feed some health as much as possible, but with the window being opened by Tensor, that's gonna go ahead and shut down this objective with two minutes, 50 seconds on the clock. They will go ahead and grab Objective Alpha and start making their way to Objective Bravo. You know, I'm not 100% sure that I agree with the Baptiste window there with the Ant Matrix, but it's also not the worst ultimate to throw away, right? Like, it's it's not it's not, it's not not bad. You can build a... He'll probably have it up by the end of this fight if they don't steamroll with the Echo ultimate and the triple shield that they'll doubtlessly have. Well, it was a very good play, though, to throw down the to throw down the lamp as soon as they realized that Natalie was no longer present, gave them the edge they needed, and started that domino effect. That is true. Let's go ahead and see if they can make it happen. Dragon Strike coming in, looking to see if they can get what they're looking for, but the lamp will keep everything going. Wolfie taking down the Brad as they immediately uh, swap into configuration mode, and the picks are just coming in as the window opens. Willow right now in the back line, looking to see if they can get some picks of their own, but that's a team kill coming out for the Otaku Empire as they hold strong with four minutes, 45 seconds left on the defense. Now, I was going to comment that Brad kind of went for the the, the high risk, high reward, but ended up with the high risk, no reward uh, by copying the Ash. It was very dangerous and it could have been good if they had gotten the Bob off, but the safer bet would have probably either been Sigma or, oh, Wolfie just annihilated a, like a third of the team. Yep, that's, a, that's not a good way to start things off. That dynamite is always dangerous, and Gohan moving in to take down Burner is going to solidify the end of that push. They are, wow, they are advancing deep past the objective, almost halfway into enemy territory right there. As they go ahead and get regrouped, it looks like both teams are going to go ahead and head back to where they started. Only three minutes, 50 seconds remaining on the clock. Wolfie hit with a headshot there from Willow, but it wasn't fully charged. It was charged for a millimeter longer. A millisecond longer, rather, than it would have been an early pick. 
That would have been great, but the Gravitic Flux ends up getting traded with the Bongos and the Bob, but Bob will fall quickly to Lilithy. The window now coming out, looking to see if they can clean up, but will get immediately taken down by Wolfie, Gohan, and open due to those Bongos. They will still hold strong on this objective with three minutes, 10 seconds remaining for Tempo. A decent amount of ultimates coming out from both sides here. You'll see that the only things that came that are that are now available are the two ultimates that they used to stop the snowball from happening, and that is the window and the gravitic flux. Now we will have both DPS ults online for tempo, but that's not at all what is necessary here. Like it's not it's not what's going to win them a fight, I don't think. Because I I can definitely concur with that one. If they had maybe Gravitic Flux from Prince Willie, that would definitely help them out in this fight, but hopefully they might be able to earn it up. Gravitic Flux coming in though, ends up getting the double as it gets traded with the Dragons. Gets nothing but the window. Bob now going into the fight is going to get decimated in the back line, but not before taking Natty with them. Dragon Strength now coming in from open, looking to see if they can get a pick of their own, but Willow will end up taking down Wolfie instead so that Bob can't get invested this fight we may see them coming in as burner now coming in as the ball looking to see if they can hold strong investing themselves back in this fight first tick second tick two minutes on the clock the bob now coming into the objective ends up just barely touching but tensor just immediately decimating that despite not having the window gravitic flex now coming in for prince willie ends up gaining the pick uh from the Brad onto Silas, triple kill. Willow gets the quad, taking down open and Natty pick after pick. They will claim this objective with about half the time that we see for Otaku Empire. Willow absolutely popped off that final round and was 100% the reason that they won. I don't know whether it was him that originally got the pick onto Natty, but that was exactly what they needed to actually push forward onto the point they did lose their main tank early and, and Werner was out of commission, but it's very, very difficult for a team without a Baptiste to stand up to a team with a Baptiste, especially when you have the immortality field off, like off on cooldown. You have it available to you because that in and of itself is an immovable barrier for five seconds, however long it ends up lasting. Because mm -hmm. in other in other metas where you would have seen a Zarya or maybe a Diva as the off tank, then it then it wouldn't have applied as much. But since Sigma has so many damage denial abilities, he ha he has the barrier. He has his he has his kinetic grasp, which then when if not stunned out, turns him into a damage denial ability. Mm -hmm. He can just body block like like Rody with his breather. Oh yeah. There was just almost nothing that could be done in that situation. I would have, I would have almost preferred to lose an Orisa in that case. And absolutely, the DPS line showed up and showed us why that the that the Orisa was not as valuable as the Baptiste in that fight. All right. Well, let's go ahead and see if they can make it happen again. They only got a minute twenty on the clock to take this objective, and Willow is going to start off strong, getting the first pick onto open. The halt ends up sending the That's tank big. off the side, and we'll be able to take down Lilithy in the back line, but gets traded as the bro. The Brad comes in with the laser. It's a 5v4 right now. Shield is down for both tanks on the side of Otaku. Able to get that shield back up for Gohan, but Prince Willy will take down Silas. It is a 3v5. They are holding on for dear life right now, but the Brad with that team is just going to take down all three of them. 45 seconds remaining on the clock. They will grab Objective Alpha and have one chance, one opportunity to take Objective Bravo. That pick in the beginning was obviously massive but something that was equally big in my opinion was Werner's pull of both Blur and Gohan off of the high ground and and the stun coming out from Prince Willie to deny the kinetic grasp so they dropped down being very exposed that was brilliantly done and that's exactly what they needed to open up the fight after that Hanzo because that could have turned into nothing but an empty pick that never got capitalized on. That is true. The window opens up and destroys both the shields very quickly. 
The dragons come out, but get nothing but lamp once again. But Willow does get the pick on to open. Now the window gets traded. Blur able to get the double kill on both the main tanks for the side of Tempo. But Willow still working in that back line. And now we see the Brad coming in as the Brig fighting 3v1. Too much damage coming in for that Brig to hold on. Only 10 seconds remaining on the clock for Tempo to be able to get in to this objective. Call Huey Lewis because they got to get back in time. And here's Prince Willie able to touch the objective just in time as overtime now is ticking away. The Bongos for Vidic Flux coming out right now, but nobody is able to touch it yet until overtime finally ticks away and the picks come in strong after that point. Locking out Tempo, they are at least able to grab objective number one, but now they have a three minute, 55 second defense against Otaku Empire as we head into round four. This is double the stakes here. It's essentially a full time bank with half the, com with, 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 with half the, the slack. You have mm -hmm. to defend only point one for the same amount of time that you had to defend both points one and two, and you lost that last time. So okay. you have to figure out, what am I going to do differently? What am I going to do to it fully engage here that doesn't result in us losing first point immediately and giving them a, another four-minute time bank to try and get point B with? Because that, in the end, is what's going to be devastating if their best-case scenario, like, right off the bat, is a, is a draw. They got first point very easily, very well. But that was a bit of heroics play. That wasn't necessarily whole team outplay, and that's what we're going to need to see in order for them to fully capitalize on point A and keep it for four minutes. That is true. The The good thing is, is that Prince Willie was able to hold relatively strong. It took them about two minutes to take objective alpha, but ideally they would like to win this map not draw this map so let's Precisely. see if they can make it happen they are once again on that high ground we see blur opting for the orissa vice the reinhardt this time around as prince willie getting some hits in falling incredibly low but able to retreat back to the safety of the team they're now flanking off in multiple directions as otaku tries to find their way in here comes the big slam from prince willie able to get all three, but immediately taken down by Silas right there. They're moving their way onto the high ground, looking to see if they can do the damage. Need to take them down. Immortality comes up, but immediately gets taken down by Wolfie, and they are just going to destroy the high ground right there. All four members of Tempo will fall. The only one left there is the Brad, who is just sneaking around that sneaky Torbjorn, trying to see if they can shave some more time off of the clock. The overdrive coming in at the 3v1 right now on the objective, but just ends up getting taken out with two minutes, 50 seconds. Make that three minutes, 20 as they get the extra 30 seconds. They have to move in and take it quick. And Tempo has to send a hard defense right now because they only got one tick to do. The Reaper swap coming out from Brad, and I do appreciate it because it looks like this fight is going to be an all-out brawl on point. They will have that close quarters brawling advantage if they keep that Reaper. It's going to be difficult for their support line to hold up to it, though. Good early there pick. There we go. That's going to be good for them. Tenzer and the Brad working together with Lilithy Discord right there, but open trading it out with the storm arrow takes willow down here comes the bob but the window gets invested as well and that bob is just tearing off the backline burner gonna end up falling to the storm arrow because that window is open in both directions both snow shields and you can't hold oh victory they see nine that was wow that... <laughs> I, I i didn't expect that that was honestly there wasn't a whole lot that could have been done there the the biggest the biggest thing that i've been that i saw the biggest difference maker was going to be silas on the brig versus having lilithy on the vast majority of the time on the zenyatta and with this point there's going to be a with first point i totally understand doing doing the zenyatta on attack or defense but on second point with so much of the of the fighting being done on point with these compositions you kind of need the brigida and the sustain and the brawl that she brings because zen is good for spam spammy maps it's good for 
the vast majority of King's Row. It, it, it's good for stuff like that. It's not necessarily the best for a, a map that's going to be so enclosed like that. It, it's... I, I get it, but I, I, I think that that was a really big part of why they ended up not succeeding on second point was when they kept the Zen in lieu of a brig. Nope, I can definitely agree with that, but I do also see what they were going for. Obviously, yeah. you want to have uh, that Zenyatta for that Transcendence provides a huge amount of utility right there, especially with the Discords as well. Maybe they were trying to out-damage them, but they just couldn't take down the shields as fast as Otaku Empire is. Going into the half, we are at 1-1, folks. It literally could be anyone's game here in the Transcendence tier. We're going to go ahead and send it to a quick halftime break while we're taking that break be sure to hit that heart punch that bell so you get notified every time we're online you can also hit that sub button four dollars 99 cents or twitch prime or amazon prime subscription we'll give you access to some amazing emotes as well as support this amazing community we're gonna head to that break and we'll see you all on the other side
I'm NPC, the Tranquility Hammer. Have you lost Overwatch games due to Smurfs, Leavers, or Throwers? Have you been on the same team as Bard? You may be entitled to compensation! I used to be in Silver. Thanks to NPC and the Overwatch Tranquility Community gear, I'm now a Gold Moira player, Spawn Camping Ice, the Season 3 Discord Tier MVP. Thanks, NPC! Go to my website right now and let me fight for discounts for you. Go to owtranquility.org and click store, or go to shop.spreadshirt.com slash owtranquility. I've asked to remain anonymous for my safety, but I'm an admin in an Overwatch community. It can be exhausting work. But these shirts, they're so cheap, I have shirts to burn. And now thanks to NPC, I can own the Zoomers. And I can do it in style. I'm going to hammer down prices of Tranquility merchandise this week. Up to 15%. If you place your order on July 29th or July 30th, you'll get 15% off your entire order. Go to my website now to get the SR and the Tranquility gear that you deserve. Tranquility merchandise does not guarantee victories in Overwatch or increase in skill rating. 15% off valid on orders placed on July 29th and 30th at Spreadshirt.com.
Welcome back to Overwatch Tranquility. We missed you. We hope you had a great halftime break. We have an amazing matchup going on tonight between Tempo and we Utaku do, Empire, do. currently setting one and one in their first Transcendence tier match for Season 5. I'm Captain Jack, joined by Thistle on the color once again. A Thistle, we were talking about during the break that uh, you predict that since Otaku is now uh, familiar with the Prince Willy Wrecking Ball, trying to disturb their backline and whatnot, that Otaku's looking to possibly take the rest of this. Uh, is there any other information that you feel that uh, that the people at home might want to know about why you feel Otaku might uh, might take the second half? I think that's that. It might be specifically the, the heroes that they've been on, but I think Silas has been outperforming Lilithy a little bit with mm. the with, with 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 the support role. I think that he's, Silas is doing fantastically on the brig, and while some say uh, that brig isn't as much of a skilled hero, and some would be correct, that doesn't mean <laughs> that that doesn't mean that you can't outperform someone. The, the, the biggest thing that I've been seeing Welcome. so far is the space that's being made almost like Brig is a third tank. Gotcha. Um, like, Brig's been enabling a brawl very close, and that's been something that, I, that I've been enjoying to watch. And I think that what I've been seeing so far, um, Willow has got the edge, and I think maybe Brad has the edge in terms of the DPS lineup. Mm -hmm. But... Prince Willy might have met his match against Gohan. Gohan's a fantastic Sigma and has mm -hmm. been doing beautifully. Um, and as far as the Orisas go, as long as you can hold down Mouse 1, you're kind of okay. Not actually. But it, like... It's not... Okay, I'm done with you. It's not that easy to play Orisa. Goodness gracious. To Look, hold down Mouse 1. <laughs> I, I'm... I'm I'm only a master's main tank, but I also refuse to play Arisa because I'm forced to play her in scrims and she's the most boring character I've ever played. Well, see, you're not having enough fun with her then. I'm definitely I'm a, not. I'm a platinum tank and I absolutely love playing Arisa. So I, I guess we will agree to disagree. That's totally but, fair. But right now we are going into Hollywood. I hope everybody's got their signed glasses, sunglasses and their signature book. Cause we're looking to get some as we go ahead and move into the action. The Brad coming out on that four, but once again with Open and Wolfie on that double sniper comp. Once again with that Hanzo and that Ash building up to that high ground. Wolfie already taking down the Brad turret, getting that amp power from Natty coming in on that a Mercy, trying to hold strong burner and Prince Willy are Sending Otaku Empire back to the spawn. Lilithy holding very strong on that high ground as the brig and showing that they will not be bested by Silas, who is now on the petite. Now, if you take the third person view on Orisa, the biggest thing right now is she has the front open to her, and the thing that can be taken is the right side, and Brig has that to a T. There's no Brig right now. For, uh, for Otaku. There, there's just no brig, and that is a really big deal. That is huge for them. That sun potential, that flail. But Bob's going on to the objective, looking to see if they can start that percentage climb for them, seeing if they can get that first tick. The shields get invested to try to take out the Bob. Prince really will end up getting it. Molten Core now coming out from the Brad as we see Wolfie taking down Tenzer with the dynamite. Now the window coming out for Silas as well as the Valkyrie for Natty. And they will go ahead and clean up the objective, grabbing objective alpha again with just about two minutes on the clock. They will go ahead and get that payload moving as they head into the street. Now, there's a pretty much even sustained amount going on here. The, the, the only difference is there, the sustain coming out from tempo is sustained by addition. They have the break and they have like they have that forceful double shield pressure composition. But the sustain for Otaku is sustained by subtraction. 
That's really big. Yep, that distraction indeed happening as those dragons end up taking down Werner. Forbidden Flux comes out from Prince Willy as the Bobs get invested. The only one that stands strong right now is Wolfie, who has control of the high ground, or at least had control of the high ground until Willow ended up sending them off with the coach gun. Brad is going to be able to take back the objective, but just briefly as they take down Blur, Willow finally getting a pick on their counter, Wolfie, and it doesn't look like the res will be coming in for them. They will go ahead and regroup back and spawn three minutes, 30 seconds remaining on the clock. Now, the, the reason that the sustain by subtraction is what I mean is the damage boosted dynamite is gonna make a pretty big dent and they and like that kind of makes up for it. Window versus Bongo's going down right now. Looking to see who's gonna get the first pick. Both oh, that's big. Going down though is gonna provide a lot of damage. Blur will end up falling to Werner right there as they go ahead and send Otaku back to spawn once again. It looks like everyone, oh no, almost everyone gets away. Wolfie ends up getting sodded out by Lilithy. The rest of the team tries to make their way back in to save them and will not be successful. Prince Willie taking them out with that big accretion. The rest does come in there at the end. Now back into the fight. Bongos and Window getting invested in reverse. This time around, Blur will get the first pick on to Prince Willie, but the Brad with the double kill right there, investing the Bob. Now back into the fight, looking to see if they can get those picks of both of the shields down for Odaku Empire as they continue to hold strong with this choke. Lilithy coming in, ends up getting booped up by the Bob, immediately taken down by Wolfie. That turret continuing to do damage, but gets taken down by the Bob as well. Werner then falling to Wolfie. Wolfie's mob is open, follows up onto Willow. They have finally unlodged the payload with two minutes, five seconds on the clock. They are going to start making their way to the big old door. Now, the, the, the reverse, that, that was fine, but in terms of ultimates, I think that the, the favor definitely goes to Tempo in this upcoming fight, and they're going to need it for the retake. Oh, that's a really that good first pick. That is true. Yep, but the res is not available for anyone else. Gravitic Flux coming out ends up getting three, but the immortality will hold everyone together. Wolfie Four now all over the objective, but Dragon Strike comes in return open, gives the triple kill and a strong hold will. Excuse me, not be had. Brad trying to get some picks in the back line as they take down Silas, but that will be it. That payload is going to make its way into objective number two, giving them two minutes, 40 seconds on the clock to make it to that VIP spot. The shiny golden box of victory just right there in front of them. The the, the reason that that main fight was lost there was because of... Was, was you see what I see? I nobody, think that's really they sad. they got too anxious. They went in going for those picks and nobody was on the payload. So a whole 15, 20 close. seconds wasted. But Bob's getting invested into the fight. Gravitic Lux now coming out from either side as well. But Gohan will be the Super Saiyan Master with that Gravitic Lux. As we see the dynamite coming in, Window tries to hold strong. Now the mob gets invested from Willow, trying to see if they can absorb and do damage, but will get taken down by Wolfie just the same. Just not getting the same support that Wolfie's Bob is, but Brad will end up taking down Wolfie's rest in for Wolfie once again as they start moving their way in. Only about 10 meters remaining. One minute, 40 seconds remaining for Tempo to try to continue to hold this defense, but the picks are just not coming in their favor right now as they continue to try to fight through Wolfie, get the pick onto Willow on the side as they continue to make their way through Molten Core all over the objective right now, trying to avoid the shield best they can hold and to bringing Gohan into it getting demolished by the molten core Prince really pushes in on blur gets the fix there and that is going to be a hold of this objective the team kill will ring out loud and proud as they go ahead and hold with only a minute on the clock for Otaku and Lilithy has a bit of a problem with over committing towards the fights I found where they where they move in a little far when they think that they've got the edge and the team's just not with them and that's either a Lilithy problem or it's an everyone else problem 
but either way, it's a team problem. Like that's what's causing them to win a lot of to lose a lot of plays here. Dragon Strike Bongos, Window, Gravitic Flux, everything getting traded right now. But the Pixel Stir coming in as Willow and Werner get the double on the DPS. We'll be able to take down Lilithes just before that. And the Res will bring Open back into the fight. The Window now coming in for Tenzer as they try to fight their way through the shields of Otaku Empire. 15 seconds remaining on the clock. And the turret pulled strong. The boss gets invested into the fight from Wolfie. Gravitic Flux as well from Gohan. Looking to see if they can finalize those picks, but they will be unsuccessful. Burner holding strong. Molten Core coming out once again. Spreading it out over both entrances. Bob trying to get invested there. But, or sorry, there is no other Bob. Willow has switched over to the Widowmaker. Six from a distance as the Brad turret is just cleaning up the objective. That rivet gun, that turret, doing all of the damage that a little Torbjorn can do as overtime ticks away. They will hold on to this objective at the 66.30 meter mark just shy of that final gold VIP square. We have seen Tempo really set themselves up for a success here on Hollywood. Now, the biggest thing that I think contributed to that success is Willow's swap onto the Widowmaker. They've put a lot of pressure, not, not pressure, they've put a lot of faith into the carry DPS potential between Brad and Willow, and that's the way to win this composition. That's, that's the way to to continue with this victory because like i said before the dps is going to be the strongest portion of tempo's roster and if they put the dps carry potential into both willow and brad then they're going to end up showing up big time and it could just be enough to end up overriding any other advantages that otaku empire will have out the gate that is absolutely true and it looks like we have got I, every every round it seems like the teams just continue to get closer and closer and closer to matching one another and i think we are at that point we have got a complete mirror composition orisa sigma torb ash mercy and baptiste all on either side looking to see if it's not if it's not who is the better DPS player or who is the better character, but now who has the best skill on which hero, which matchup is going to win it out. Let's go ahead and see what happens as Tempo starts moving their way in. The shield already down for Gohan as Willow able to take down Open's turret. They're now moving their way in, but Wolfie picking off Lilithy very early in that fight. The res does come in from Tenzer to try to keep everything going as they move their way. Now onto the opposite high ground, looking to see if they can get some picks themselves. Gohan really out of position right there hoping to get halted out but will end up uh, getting back to the safety of the team and the objective we're going to see tempo now moving their way back onto that high ground looking to see if they can get the picks that they are looking for bob already invested into the fight from wolfie trying to work their way in but the brad ends up taking down blur and Werner will take down wolfie bob so now that is two heroes out of the fight right now the rest coming in from blur though as the window gets invested from the little of Looking to see if they can get those additional picks for Vidic Flux big. coming in as up keeping Fritz really off the point, allowing Silas to take them out. Wolfie gonna follow up on the Brad, and I think that is going to be the end of Tempo's push. A minute and a half off of the clock. They are trying to hold on as much as they can, but the advancing Otaku Empire is going to crush them right now, sending them all back to spawn. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining on the clock. That was a massive play from Utako Empire. That Bob was not at all meant to get anything done. It was meant to create enough space to allow the Mercy to go for the res and balance out the game again. That was just, uh, the ultimate was basically an undo button. And that's it, that it, it helped. And after the investment from Prince Willy, uh, or after the investment from Gohan rather, who has now almost matched Prince Willy in ultimate charge, that, that, that just a, a perfect equalizer right there. Oh my goodness, and another Bob is back out on the field for Wolfie. The res comes in as they get taken out by Willow and they will take down that Bob. 
once again. The window is now open for Silas, looking to do a heck of a ton of damage, using the Hulk to try to pull them out of the stairwell. Will be unsuccessful. They have waited it out, and now the window becomes open for them as they get the double kill. Bob now invested on the objective, but the Bolt Corps comes out for open, trying to see if they can secure the objective for them as they continue to fight it out. One minute, 20 seconds remaining on the clock as we see the feed coming in. Now Molten Core coming in for the Brad, looking to see if they can take control of the low ground and the high ground. Bongos coming out, allows Willow to take down open, but Wolfie is holding strong right now. The Reds looking to come in, but gets taken down by Willow. It is the Willow and Wolfie show right now as they trade picks for picks until Silas ends up taking Willow out of the equation. It is a 2v3 fight on the objective right now. Bongos coming out now for Blur, trying to solidify control of this objective with only 40 seconds remaining. They will take it back, but without an ultimate to their name, we are going to see if Tempo can indeed get that final tick on the objective. It was a very close fight and played extremely well. The only ultimate coming online here for Otaku is going to be that Bob or and the window, excuse me. Those are both ultimates that can do wonders. One to make space and buy time, be a tempo ult if you excuse the pun. Oh, but the pick, it's early. That's a very first oh. pick. Willow taking down Wolfie, but Gohan will trade for Werner, but the res comes in for them. Window now coming open, but somebody has got to touch that active overtime the away as Lamp gets invested. They're able to touch it just in time. Overtime picking, but Gohan and Open are getting those picks right now. The Valkyrie gets invested there from Tenzer, but Prince Willie ends up falling to the Torp turret of Open. Now the Bob gets thrown into the objective. Overtime continuing to tick away, but Wolfie's Bob, the damage is already done. Will oh, is hammer the kill. Only one left. Hammer kill coming in from Open right there as the Molten Core goes down on the objective. No one is able to hold strong, and Otaku Empire will take the lead here on Hollywood 2-1. to one in the Transcendence tier matchup. That was beautifully played by Otaku. They used the they used the Bob in exactly the perfect time, so they used it as as uh, a way to stall the fight out. So it, it, they used it as either an equalizer or a way to flip the fight in their favor. Um, they never used it really as an engagement, and that's kind of what you what you should be doing with this meta with Bob. And the other thing that, that, I, that I think was brilliantly played is actually the, the, the Gravitic Fluxes that came out from Utaku. Those were beautifully placed. They were used to flip fights. They like, they use all their ultimates exactly what they were meant to be used for. They were always used, all, like the timing was always perfect. There's very little criticism that I have for the ultimate economy for Utaku Empire here. Gohan did a very good job. No, I can definitely agree with you right there. Gohan was staying incredibly strong, and even so, it seemed to be the battle of the opposites throughout that entire fight. It was it was Lilithy versus Silas. It was Natty versus Tenzer, you know, going for those reses and trying to pull them off. It was uh you know, it was Prince Willie versus Gohan in the Sigma battle scene who can suck up as much damage as possible. And then, of course, the the linchpin of both sides was the fight between Wolfie and Willow on those ashes, Welcome just completely back and forth between the two of them over and over and over again. Who could get the majority of the picks? And right now, Wolfie is holding the top of that. We are headed now into possibly our final match of the evening as we head into Rialto. Uh, which, again, lots of long sight lines, and it looks like Willow is going to be opting into that Widowmaker to start things off very, very early. Um, what do you think about that? Do you think Willow's Widow is going to hold strong against Wolfie's Edge? I think that there's the three maps that everyone who's not a DPS player hates to see in ladder. Mm -hmm. Um especially when you see when when you load into a map there's two strikes first one is is it a dps carry map second one is what portrait are the two dps on the other team because especially in the higher tier of games on maps like this one on maps like junkertown 
it can end up being which team has the better smurf dps and that, it's a little unfortunate but honestly that is where it ends up lying at mm -hmm. some at some points and with the dps performance coming out from tempo i would not be surprised to see them take it but that's not to say that we haven't seen some yes coming out from otaku especially with this farmer see very interesting pick here uh interesting but holding very strong already as they get the pick on the brad who is going to be coming out on an ash of their own willow taking over the torbjorn role as they go ahead and get pushed back already to the first objective spot without the payload being anywhere close they're just having such a hard time getting an angle on to open the natty right now on that bar mercy play the brad has swapped over to the Widowmaker, looking to see if they can get those headshots rather quickly they're already queuing in on the side looking to see if they can get those picks but are now fighting off against wolfie in the sidelines as the rest of the battle goes on the card has made its way to objective number one as the widow as the window is open for tenzer they put in a lot of damage oh! barrage quadruple kill coming in for open right there as they just clean up the objective team kill rings loud and proud as objective one is captured by otaku empire and they're gonna start moving their way to objective number two Pharmacy is such a pain to deal with, if I'm completely honest, and that is the best way to deal with pesky hits down the other team. It was, I don't know whether this was their original plan or whether it was a preemptive strike. Either way, this could see them all the way to third point and up until the inside portion, because Pharmacy, the biggest counter to it is a hit scan, and the only way to outplay a hit scan on Pharmacy is taking tight angles that you can poke out from cover in. And with all the windows, the buildings, everything, it's almost impossible to hit or see a far that doesn't want to be hit or seen. That is true. And the Molten Core now coming out from Willow, looking to see if they can get some picks right there. Gravitic Flux also coming out from Gohan, but will end up falling in the Molten Core. But the trade comes out from Blur, taking down both Willow and Burner. The Red brings back Gohan, so now it's a 4v6 fight on the objective here at the choke. And they are going to get pushed back once the Bar of Mercy makes their way through the window open gets Lilithy and Prince Willie those shots are just coming in so hard Willow has now swapped over to the McCree because now it just seems to be the open and natty show Wolfie was holding strong for the first three maps but now open has taken to the sky and literally the path is open their last hope is going to be third point here and that's not even even foolproof either. It's not like Eichenwald where the entirety of third point is inside. You still have that very large archway that can be used to the far as advantage. Uh, so she can just poke from the outside of it and peek around every so often, which is what we can see Open planning to do here. The barrage is ready, and that's definitely what's going to be the primary goal here. Oh, and there it comes, but the but they end up popping the immortality just in time, saving the day. Burner able to take down Open as the window gets opened by Tenzer. They're going to go ahead and continue to get picked, but the Bongo's now invested from Blur, looking to see if they can get some damage in there now. Now the Bongo's coming out for Burner, seeing if they can equal up that damage to get some picks of their own, but Blur will fall the Brad as they move their way into the objective. They are now at the choke. Archers trying to see if they can hold strong. You got Wolfie on the side, pushing them back, further back into this beautiful library right here, seeing if they can get those picks. Gravitic Flux now coming out from Gohan, ends up getting some picks with the help of Wolfie and Blur, and I think this might be all said and done for the side of Tempo as the picks continue to come in for Otaku Empire. It is hard to see them stand up against anything else right now as they push it. This was an extremely fast take. There were fights that were neutralized momentarily, but there was never a lost fight for Otaku. The problem is, Farmer C is not as easy to run on defense here because when you're on the defense is when you're on the back foot. You 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 have to you, you start on the back foot. You need to do something in order to be able to collapse onto the enemy. And unless they get some kind of advantage, whether it be a little while of poking and shield break, mm -hmm. 
uh, or whether it be uh, like a, a pick, you're going to need to do something in order to get, get a collapsible advantage because Pharmacy wants to play the game slowly and on defense you have less of an opportunity to set the tempo of fights. On attack, you can set you can really choose to attack fantastic. however however fast you want, however slow you want. But on defense, the attackers really get to choose whatever tempo is being pursued. Um, so th we're not going to be seeing the Pharmacy. We're going to be seeing the Echo Mercy, which I think is actually a pretty decent substitute for what they were running. I think the Echo Mercy is less tempo dependent and can be just as powerful with the damage boosted stickies. The fact that you have said tempo twice when referring to Otaku Empire has been exhilarating for me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we're, we're definitely not trying to kill people at home. I swear, folks. Absolutely not, no. <laughs> but but Tempo will now be setting the tempo as they head into the attack. It looks like they are going for the Rhine the Sigma composition. This is the first time we have seen them work that out tonight. The Brad getting double followed. <laughs> by Wolfie's Dynamite, probably a, a good show of force coming out against uh, that sniper, but Willow will take down Open in trade, so it is a 5v5 right now. The Immortality Field already getting used as Wolfie gets the Dynamite kill on to Tenzer, making it that 4v, well, 5v5 now that the Brad's back in the fight, but with Tenzer out, that means not a lot of healing on the point, and Blur will take down Burner. Holding them out, 3 minutes, 20 seconds on the clock, and the pick just continue to come in for Otaku Empire. Exactly. The, the getting the pick onto open early was a really good thing, because the last thing you want to happen is have open duplicate your Reinhardt and have a Reinhardt Sigma or Risa pushing into your, pushing into your front line. Actually, nothing you can do about that whatsoever. Especially with a pull fire strike, after one fire strike, you get your ultimate. Uh, as Echo, as Echo Rhyme. Very little that can be done. That is true, but the payload is moving its way forward thanks to Willow, but Open gets the first pick on to Werner. The window now open for Silas, providing that damage for the rest of the team. As we see in the back line, the Brad just trying to hold strong, but getting melted by Open's focus beam. That payload continuing to move forward, but now the damage is focused on the objective. Prince really going to be probably the last one to fall right here as Werner tries to come in and save Tenzer from a, an ultimate death right there. Two minutes, 10 seconds on the clock as they regroup in the spawn. Absolutely, and what we see here is Open still does not have the duplicate, uh, du duplicate, and it's been two minutes. So they've been doing a really good job of shutting him down. On the reverse side of that, though, Brad does not has not been having a lot of uptime, but they do have their ultimate. Nanoblade is going to be online as soon as he respawns, so it's likely they'll wait for that and use Nanoblade as their win condition as they move in. It's going to be very difficult to defeat it unless you want to, unless you want to commit both Bob and Sigma. Looks like Sigma won't be there. Beat has caught and gotten out though. That is true, and the Bob is going to get invested oh, early with a big shatter coming in from Burner. Here comes the Nanoblade, looking to clean it up, but the Immortality Field is up, trying to save Silas as much as possible and will end up being successful. The, we do now see the duplicate come in from open, ends up getting a slam, but not able to finalize on that kill, but the damage has been done from the side of Otaku Empire. All these ultimates invested and not a single a single bit of movement on the objective past where they had already gotten, and they've only got a minute left on the call. Blur being a very aggressive force here, moving forward and ended up taking down pretty much single-handedly Willow and then finished off Prince Willy. Speaking of Willow, that opening pick will disable Rez for the rest of this opening fight. And that was no really their only advantage when it came into sight. here. The ultimate side, I think, um, will slightly end up favoring, um, will slightly end up favoring Tempo because Shatter and Nano are two very fast-building ultimates. 
Ooh, big anti nade ends up going in on the main tanks, looking to see if they can get the picture they're looking for, but not able to get that damage in fast enough. They have pushed into objective number one, trying to hold as much as they can. Only 10 seconds remaining on the clock. Otaku Empire looking to push back in as Natty and Silas have the window and Valkyrie on line, oh, but huge. Willow shutting down Silas at the beginning of that fight. Blur soon to follow by Prince Willie. They are just me millimeters away, 0.2 meters from grabbing the objective and they will end up getting 0.01 and there it is. We will see Tempo setting the beat once again as they get two and a half minutes added to their time. Back to me. Now, only committing, the, committing the two support ultimates here, especially when they're when they build so fast, I think was 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 a fair shake. Right now, Prince Willy is, is not close to the Gravitic Flux, and the Nano was used last fight. The only thing that they have coming in here, beat and shatter, and then it really depends on how lucky the Junkrat spam is moving into this point to tell them whether or not they'll get tired. So the ultimate reliably favor Otaku here. Oh, it looks like they're going to get picked up, but open will grab Willy, but Willow trades out for Wolfie. Gravitic Flux coming in from oh! Willow and gets a triple Gravitic Flux kill. I have disgusting. yet to get that achievement, but it is so nice to see it when it happens. That is gonna be a complete shutdown of tempo right there with only a minute 20 remaining on the clock. Right now, we have a deadly combination coming out for the side of Otaku Empire with that bongo so and that duplication likely going to be going down onto the Reinhardt here. They will be going out swinging. There it is, bongos and Rhine coming into the action right now. We see the sleep dart coming in on to open though. They're gonna try to shut that down before the shatter comes in. Shatter gets nothing but shield to Brad. Getting the tire, ends up getting the double kill on the Natty and Wolfie, but not before the dynamite takes out Lilithy. The numbers are in Tempo's favor as they push furiously into objective number two. And it looks like they're gonna go ahead and lock that down. A minute and a half gets added to the time bank. And now they have two minutes to push into objective number three, which actually, uh, we'll put them in a good spot for another comeback. Now, that tire was absolutely massive. That was one of the biggest Junkrat ultimates I've ever seen. Because the advantage that they had going in there was being able to play close with that Reinhardt, but the tire, of course, literally the entire team to back up. They had, there was no support there for open on that Reinhardt play. And there was just absolutely nothing that could actually be done. So, in addition to getting two kills, Open was pretty much already dead because they were by themselves and doing very little. The sleep dart was big, and the tire was big. That was just a, a gorgeous play from Brad. That is true, and we will see them get pushed off again, but the ult advantage right now is strongly in Tempo's favor with only a minute, 10 seconds remaining on the clock. Another tire making its way out, just holding, biding its time, trying to see if they can make their way through, but Open ends up picking them off. Gravitic Flux coming in for either side, ends up getting sucked up by the Immortality Field. Shatter comes in, gets eaten up by the shields. Now here comes the window and the Bob invested into the fight. All the damage coming out, but still not a pick we had up before I say it open. Ends up getting Willow through the window. They're still pushing in. High Noon coming in as they try to hold strong. The Brad will end up falling there as well. Blur taking out Burner. Only 30 seconds remaining on the clock. They are gonna get a quick reset, but they have got to get into this objective quickly. This is their final chance to make it to objective three and send it to the next round. This, this 15 seconds is gonna be the most important 15 seconds of the game. Beat versus Valkyrie. It's, it, it's, I think this slightly favors the Valkyrie because there's no huge sustain ultimate, or there's no huge ult that they would need sustain for because, uh, the Gravitic Flux is not yet online. They may choose to beat into this fight. There they go. There it's it not is. There. The beat goes into the fight, and here comes the Gravitic Flux. 
ends up grabbing Chew, but will they take him out? And they oh, the will murder and Lilith the end up falling to that falling, falling, falling down like London Bridge. Overtime ticks away, but honestly, I think that this is a lost fight, folks. Otaku Empire taking away Rialto and will advance their way in grabbing this entire match three to one against Temple. Play of the game. Very, very well played, to be honest. And the big, the biggest part of that was at the very end, Gohan not getting greedy with the last ult, just taking Reinhardt, seeing that he was already at half HP and that there was not a whole lot that he could do. So he grabbed the Reinhardt that was being over aggressive at 50 HP and knocked him down, as you mentioned, just like London Bridge. And there wasn't there wasn't anything that could be done. Werner Werner was just annihilated by gravity, and the, an even fight was to be had if you were to look at numbers. But as ter as far as picks go, a DPS slot for the main tank, I would definitely take that trade any day of the week. I can definitely agree with that. It's just like it's just like Zarya says, gravity kills. <laughs> That's that's true. Uh, yeah. All right, folks. Well, that is it for us tonight. But first, we want to throw it quickly to a player of the match. So go ahead in the chat. Go ahead and pop off who your player of the match is tonight. Uh, Thistle, since this is your first match with us, why don't you go ahead and start us off? Mine is easily Gohan. The most consistent performance was well. Uh, the, uh, the, the best, most consistent performance throughout the entirety of the match. And on top of that, he had some really big plays. He had that massive three-man flux. He had that. He he played very intelligently and never, almost never overcommitted. He's absolutely my MVP for tonight. All right, I'm gonna have to give my MVP. It kind of goes without saying, but I gotta give it to Wolfie throughout the entire match, just constantly on that on that ash getting pick after pick the mm -hmm. dynamites were huge even when they weren't getting uh boosted by the mercy during that during those fights it was just coming up big bobs coming out left right and center much more than we saw coming out from the side of tempo so wolfie you're walking away with my player of the match for this evening looking into our up coming schedule which i actually have to look at a different sheet for now realizing when this is coming up we have got coming up next tuesday uh august 11th will be the fighting potatoes versus holy jalapenos in the harmony division and then we will see on thursday in discord counter shaded versus tempest and coming back up onto Friday, we will have our, our recorded match and our YouTube match, which will be Meta Rejects versus Orbit in the Transcendence tier. And in the Harmony tier, Nuclear versus Doodles. So be sure to check out all that action, either here on Twitch or on YouTube. Both of those, you can hit that subscribe button. It's free on YouTube, but you can hit it here for $4.99 again definitely helps out our community if you do that but if you can't do that just hit that subscribe on youtube and hit that heart punch that bell here on twitch so that you get notified every time we're online thank you so much to booth for being our production this evening couldn't have done it without you but that's it from us here at overwatch tranquility i'm captain jack i'm thistle and we'll see y'all next time